Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Freedom Equation podcast. My name is Michaela Bell. And I'm Scott. We are doing a little mini series here, overcoming some myths that hold us back from having a freedom mindset. And today we're on number four. So we're almost done. Which is? This is when we obsess about the outcome or the arrival. Hmm. Not loving the journey. You've heard people say it all the time, right? Yeah. Just enjoy the journey, not the the destination. It's hard to do that, though. It is. And we're going to talk about, I think, some of the reasons why. One of those maybe being that the journey you're on is not the one you actually want to be on, which is a hard truth. Yeah. But we're going to also talk about how you can maybe enjoy that journey a little bit more Mm -hmm. and realize that you really need to enjoy the journey more than just Mm -hmm. what the arrival is, because oftentimes the arrival can leave you very disappointed. Absolutely. I read a quote the other day that said, the man that enjoys walking will walk for longer than the person that enjoys the destination. And I think that we live in a society that is very focused on destination. Like, I want to arrive. I want Mm -hmm. to, even if it's, I want to be married. I just want to be married. Everything's going to be better if I'm married. Everything's going to be better if I hit 100K. Everything's going to be better if I, you know, scale to this, scale to that. Mm -hmm. And when you're so obsessed with the outcome and you don't enjoy the journey, like, you will get burnt out by that. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it's you have you do have to enjoy the process. And I think you hear a lot of people say that, right? Enjoy the journey, not the destination and all that. And if you're not enjoying the journey, you probably don't love what you do. Mm. And that's all it comes down to. Like and I think some people don't like facing that actual reality that mm. they might be doing something that someone else inspired them to do because it looked their destination looked great, mm. and so they're on a journey that they never wanted to be on and then they're stuck. Yep. And so, because if you truly, truly, because I've realized 100%, when I don't feel like doing something or I'm really lazy about doing something on a regular basis, it's a pretty clear indication to me that I don't love doing that. Mm. And so with me, that's why I do try to do a lot of different things because I sometimes know even with myself, I don't necessarily dislike what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. but I can't do that all the time. So the importance of having different things, the importance of having hobbies, which we're going to talk about in the next episode. And Mm -hmm. it's just important because... You just have to realize that if you wake up every day, now if you wake up every day and you work for somebody and maybe, you know, that's not your ideal, whatever, that's fine. That's another kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. But for the business owner Mm -hmm. who's waking up every day and having a hard time working or getting into it, that should be a pretty clear indication to you. You might not necessarily be doing what you love. Yeah. And I I was in that situation Mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. I was selling makeup and skincare. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. love makeup and mm-hmm. skincare. Um, but yeah, I just, there was something in me that felt inauthentic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of when when I knew. But so many people, and maybe this is you, like maybe you've decided to, you know, take a career or you went to school for something because your parents wanted you to. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so many of us are we've made decisions for other people Mm -hmm. for approval of other people Mm -hmm. and not for ourselves. So this might be a really good opportunity for you to kind of say, let me take a second. Mm -hmm. Let me Mm -hmm. really sit down and ask myself these, some, some tough questions because we don't often create space for us Mm -hmm. to even think. Yep. So create a little space for yourself to think and ask yourself some of those questions. If I could do, like, what do I really want to do? Yeah. Or what do people come to me for? Yeah. What do people come to me for advice for? Mm-hmm. Like, or what do I, when I'm searching on YouTube, yep. what am I looking for? Yep. And also being okay that that's, I think sometimes that's a hard reality for certain people. Yeah. Especially if you've, especially if it seemed, you know, for such a long time, like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to I was a musician for 10 years before I did anything else. I eventually got to a point where I'm like, I'm not enjoying this anymore. Mm. And that actually really sucked in my head because I was kind of like, well, now what? Yeah. Like this this has been all I've done. Yeah. And what what do I do next? Yeah, it becomes And that identity. can be frustrating. Yeah, it, and, and it just can become frustrating because especially if you're someone that, you know, paid for schooling, right? Yeah. And you're like, I have to stay here. Yeah. I, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to be here. Right. Another whole topic that we won't even right. get into. <laughs> but the whole point is you have to realize it's hard. I think it's hard to just suddenly re-spark a passion that's 
gone. Mm. I, I think it's hard. I, I think it, it takes it takes a very intentional effort. And sometimes I think it is impossible to just start loving certain tasks or certain things you're doing that you ultimately never liked. Mm. You just because when you start it, you might be going through what's considered as the grind. Yeah. And you're just like, well, this is just the hard time, whatever. I'm not going to always love it. Well, be careful. Yeah. Because if you didn't love going through it, you're not going to suddenly love it just mm-hmm. when success happens. Mm-hmm. It's still the same task. You're just making more money with it. Right. So really evaluating, am I doing what I love doing yeah. and being okay that if the actual reality is no, then maybe I should pivot. And mm-hmm. that's why I do think the idea of scaling and hiring can be mm-hmm. beneficial. Absolutely. Because if you have built a business mm-hmm. that doesn't revolve entirely around you mm-hmm. and you decide to pivot, the bi- the business and that money mm-hmm. does not have to stop coming in. Correct. And you can pivot yourself mm-hmm. to a new level of freedom and not feel like what a waste. You just say, cool, I'm going to start doing something different mm-hmm. and I'm going to have multiple things so that I never get tired of it, yeah. but I can have people help with the stuff that I may have run out of passion for. Yeah. That's so and good. that that's where to me freedom comes from is like mm-hmm. I don't have to be stuck mm-hmm. with a specific thing that I'm doing mm-hmm. because like other people might love that and continue that passion. Yeah, hundred percent. Get those people. That's so and good. And delegate. That's so good. All right, so we have almost arrived. See what I did there? <laughs> I see what you did there at the <laughs> end of this little mini series, <laughs> and we only have one myth left. Yep. To try to bust. Mm-hmm. What is it? It is the, I have to know everything before I start. I have to have the perfect camera. I have to have the perfect branding, the perfect website before Mm. I take the first step. Spoiler alert. You'll never know everything. (laughs) Yeah. So might as well stop that myth. But we are going (laughs) to dive into it of of how that can really hold you back Mm -hmm. and why it's so important to realize that part of the journey is learning and improving. And that's what we're going to talk about. If you feel slightly like, a perfectionist in some areas of your life, this is probably going to be a good good myth for, for you to sure. bust. So come on back. Yeah. Or if you're watching this and the episode's already there, we'll make sure we link it down below. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll see you there. See ya.